My name is Christian Schwantes. I'm a data scientist at Capital One. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about bin kernels very briefly. Um, but just to give you a little bit of motivation, um, so Capital One's interested in anomaly detection for a number of reasons. Uh, my team is primarily interested in technology operations, uh, so monitoring our core infrastructure and triggering alerts when things go down. And so we look at things like CPU utilization over time, uh, memory usage, uh, network traffic, uh, as well as uh, customer transactions like whether uh, someone can log into the app or not. Um, and the goal here is to basically trigger an alert and send it off to the operations team as quickly as possible. Um, but the, because of the diversity of our data, uh, we need really sophisticated uh, and flexible models. Uh, so we're actually using Gaussian processes for modeling these time series. Uh, and so the kind of elephant in the room when training one of these things is that uh, the fitting process scales as n cubed, where n is the amount of data you have. Uh, and so that can be a huge challenge if you're trying to make trigger an alert on a minute time scale, but you need at least a week's worth of data in order to actually look at the weekly fluctuations and the daily fluctuations. And so the sort of uh, standard technique to getting around this is to take a random or not so random subset of your observed data. So on the left, I'm, I'm depicting this. So on the left half of each of these charts, the training set, uh, in gray, uh, the gray line is the actual time series. Uh, the gray dots are just a random subset that I'm grabbing. Uh, and you can see, in this case, uh, the uh, credible region is missing, but we do have error bars as well. Uh, but um, you can see in the sort of left-hand case where there's not a lot of noise and the signal is really well behaved, our predictions are very accurate. So in blue is the model's prediction, and in red is the uh, actual uh, time series that we're trying to predict. And so you see for well-behaved well time series, this sort of random subset uh, approach works really well. But when you have a noisy time series, which is typically the case for most of these applications, uh, our prediction is not so great. Uh, and so the problem here is that when you have uh, fast noise and slow uh, periodic signal, uh, it becomes really hard to distinguish between the fast and slow motions when you're only looking at a small subset of the data. And so we'd like to be more efficient and use our data more effectively. Uh, and so we're going to use a binned approach. And so the way that we're doing this is that we're going to define a latent GP that we never observe. Uh, and then we're going to say that we observe uh, averaged uh, versions of that GP. So if you have some function that we never observe, we actually average that value over minutes or hours or days or weeks. Um, so that would be akin to counting the number of logins in the last minute, the last hour, the last day, the last week. Um, and by using these multiple bins at different resolutions, you can gain a lot of information about both slow and fast timescales. Um, and so here's the same example I was showing you before, but with the binned approach. So I've swapped out uh, half of those little points uh, with larger bars. You, you notice that these, these intervals cover the entire span of that training set, um, but it's the same number of data points, which is all the GP actually cares about. And so with the same number of data points, we can actually achieve a much better uh, uh, prediction. Uh, on the right is just kind of a survey just to prove that I haven't cherry picked my examples here. Uh, so there should be uh, some error bars there, but they're not showing up. Um, but basically, on the y-axis is the mean absolute scaled error. It's just a measure of how good the fit is. Uh, lower is better. And so the bin approach, uh, especially in kind of medium to low uh, signal to noise, uh, uh, the bin approach actually works quite a bit better than the sort of non binned approach. Um, and this sort of approach is really necessary for us uh, as we are interested in detecting anomalies as quickly as possible, which means making predictions at the minute level. But oftentimes those anomalies can occur over longer time scales like multiple hours. And so we need to both uh, model kind of hours and day time scale while making predictions at, at the minute level. And so this is one way to achieve that. Thanks. That's it. <laughs>